Welcome to the online clinical cannabis class. Today, before we start our session, I want to respond to an audience inquiry. Why I write all the things in Chinese? Chinese? Because I work in Singapore. Singapore should write in simplified Chinese. Of course, I have some reason. First, we have traditional Chinese and simplified Chinese. Nowadays, the simplified Chinese characters are the majority. People in China, Malaysia, and Singapore are using simplified Chinese. But traditional Chinese is rather from the Asian Chinese. It is still in use in Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Macau. I'm from Hong Kong, so that's why from my very early education to now, I've been using traditional Chinese. I want to share with you because first is the very tradition of our Chinese culture. So I want to show you. If you know how to read simplified Chinese, definitely reading traditional Chinese is not too difficult. You can simply convert a little bit. And I have the responsibility to preserve this culture because this culture is very important to us. Even the foreigner, when they go for Google Translator, they don't understand the story, they will directly translate into traditional Chinese. So when you read some foreigners, if they learn Chinese, they are more likely to show you the traditional Chinese characters. Also, if you like studying old Chinese history literature or when you study traditional Chinese medicine, the old literature and books are also written in traditional Chinese. Even you find in the old literature in Korean and old literature in Japan, they also show traditional Chinese characters. That's why I want to keep it to show you. Okay, now coming back to for today's lesson. Today we will cover different body parts. Some of them I have covered in the previous session of pain. You can revise it. As physiotherapy and other healthcare professional, we follow the body chart and then we divide the region in uh, according to our joints. For the upper quadrant, the sequence goes from shoulder, elbow to wrist and hand. Shoulder, we say in canonis is gin bo. However, gin bo is rather as very formal. Uh, written Chinese, we say in oral Chinese, we rather say in bottle, bottle in Cantonese. For the elbow, we call it in Cantonese is sao zhan, sao zhan, very simple. The whole arm, we call it sao bei, sao bei, representing the whole arm. And then further down to the wrist. The wrist we call it sao wun, sao wun. The wrist, the wrist joint. Okay, anything below the wrist joint here, the palm, the palm, palm side, we call it sao jern, sao jern. Okay, going into individual fingers, we call it sao ji, sao ji. Okay, let me repeat all these three in a row. It's a sao wun, sao zhen, sao ji. Um, maybe for English speaker a little bit challenging because um, speaking English you have intonation and a lot of variation. But uh, for these three categories, it sounds very short and quite similar. So may need to practice a little bit to memorize that. And now. You know that when I read so many terms, you know anything describing, describing relating to the arm, we use Chinese character is sao, sao. So sao, sao bei, sao zhan, sao wun, sao zhen, sao ji. So when you hear in English, um, not that similar, so easy to remember, but in Chinese, yeah, maybe for you a little bit confusing, so you may need to practice a little bit. 
Then we go down to the lower quadrant. Lower quadrant, we go to, for the time first the time. We say in formal way is tai 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 tai. But in more in general, oral, casual, or English. Uh, I mean, sorry, I mean casual canonist. We say in tai bei tai bei. Do you remember how to say front and back? Because of the body chart, we need to consider the anterior side and posterior side. Yeah, I have gone through with you before, right? In the front, we call it Tai Tai Qin Bin. At the back, we call it Tai Tai Hao Bin. Qin. Hao, if you can remember. Okay? Going to the knee, down to the knee. The knee is called Sat Tao. Sat Tao. Very straightforward. Sometimes he also asks about the buttock area. Buttock area. In Canonist, we say in pei gu, pei gu. Okay, so it divides on left and right side. But in very layman Canonist, I don't know where it's from. Yeah, I, I learned this word is from my very young, but no one explained to me. Uh, in Canonist, we say buttock, we say pet, pet. Pat Pat. Yes, it's no Chinese character. I don't know where is it from. Yeah, if some someone really know the origin, please tell me. <laughs> then for the hip joint and the ankle joints are rather complicated because uh, in English you guys say hip joint, ankle joint is very common, it's layman language. Uh, when I say in clinical practice everyone understands very well very easily but in canonis we very seldom to say because these two regions are too academic so people very seldom to use it for example hip joint in very academic world okay we say in fun guan jit fun guan jit people only hear in, in the hospital so in daily life, how the people say in Cantonese, they don't say directly the hip joint. They either say it the pelvic region instead. The pelvic they call pun guat, pun guat. Or they they use the inner thigh to represent the hip joint area. They call it tai bei loi zat, tai bei loi zat. In the thigh, we refer to the groin region, the groin region. So that's why I say hip joint in canon is rather complicated because uh, either we don't, we seldom use a very academic term, fun guan jit. Other terms we just use it the uh, represent. I don't know why. <laughs> Same as ankle. Ankle, we have very academic specific term. This is called dictionary Chinese because we only read it in dictionary in daily life, we seldom use it. Ankle, we should say properly is that Zhok Wa. Zhok Wa. Yeah, even some of my Hong Kong friends, a Cantonese speaker, they don't know either because it's very academic. How they uh, use other terms to represent, they don't use directly the location ankle, they use other nearby region to represent either they call it xiu tui, xiu tui, represent as a calf actually it's not the ankle or they they say ge zan, ge zan. also it's the heel that's why in Cantonese we seldom uh, seldom say exactly the hip joint and the ankle joint uh, I don't know why, it's just like the grammar rules, you don't know why, just follow, okay? And you know that for hip and ankle, people just say a leg in general, because they will just point to that region, they say uh, or this part of the leg, okay? The leg we call it ge, represent the leg. Yeah, some people they do is just use a finger to point here and this part of the leg, okay? Gurgledo, gurgledo. Sometimes when 
Oh, I cannot remember the English when I learned English uh, and when I was young, for example, just like I enter the subway, I don't know how to pronounce the different vegetable. I just confidently say this one, that one, please, thank you. I show you how to do it in Cantonese. If you are not familiar with the body part, you just pretend to be confident and say lay, ladle. Ladle. Use the finger to point at this part and say ladle. Do you have pain? Ladle tong tong. Ladle tong tong. Okay. Key point is add confidently. Okay. This is all the Cantonese lesson and the end lesson credit slide today is a little bit long. I want to very very honor to introduce the Chinese dessert to you. For the Chinese dessert, we have two types. One is traditional dessert, these are solid things, just like you have tiramisu. One is a liquid form, we call it tong sui, tong sui, sweet soup. Okay. So I recommend the very basic one is the red bean soup. You can learn how to make at the home. Or coconut pudding. Also very simple. Now let me introduce uh, the pictures to you. The, the left one is the red bean soup. It's a kind of south part of Chinese sweet soup. Very easy to make. But you can make it very well and very decent one if you add fancy ingredients. And also the black one here. The black one is made of black sesame. We call it sesame cream or sesame soup. Uh, both of them are quite thick and nowadays the people may think it's too sweet. That's why usually we mix with a well, rice bowl to eat it or we mix this one tau fu fa, tau fu fa. It's a kind of um, transition product between the, uh, the bean and tofu. It's not tofu. It is softer, much softer, smoother. And then you serve with sugar. Okay. In Singapore, because they, I think it's the license problem. So that's why they don't make for you on site. In Hong Kong, they will make a very big pot and a slide one by one to you. So you serve it is hot and very smooth, very delicious. In Singapore, I cannot find a very authentic one. They usually, they already pack it into a small box and sell it to you. Okay. The fourth one is the coconut pudding. Coconut pudding is rather easy. You can buy the coconut cream and the corn flour. You can make it at home easily. And some of us like adding some beans, specific beans or wet beans. It can increase the texture, flavor as well. I love it. Very easy to make it. The last one here, the yellow one, very transparent one, one. Inside are those edible flower, flower, flower. We call it guai fa go, guai fa go. With a very pleasant, elegant flavor in your mouth, um, with a little bit sweet. Usually they make it very nicely. The piece of the flower in a good appearance like an artist. I think it's comparable to the Japanese dessert. So that's why I like it very much. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I hope you have a chance to experience those Chinese dessert. Highly recommend. Thank you. See you next week.